Hey, what's up, guys? We are back at it again to speedrun Arena 15 and Clash Royale. This is Miner's Mine, and we're going to be showing you how to get past it. No matter what card levels you are, uh, we will be able to show you how to collect all these rewards and climb all the way to Executioner's Kitchen. This deck that I'm going to be showcasing works all the way to 7,500 trophies, so if you invest time and resources into leveling it up, you are not going to be wasting it. You can climb all the way to the very top of the leaderboards, all the way at 7,500. If you have no clue who I am, we can go to my friends list real quick. And you guys can see currently I am, uh, I don't know, I guess I'm ranked 7,300 in the world, but um, I'm typically a top 1,000 to 100, uh, or sorry, one top 2,000 to 1,000 in the world player. I've finished 21 in the world, so I can definitely give you guys some good advice on how to climb to the top of the leaderboard from either like Trophy Road or on uh, Path of Legends. But today we're going to be covering a Trophy Road deck. Deck also works at Path of Legends, but typically at Path of Legends, when you want to get really hyper competitive, then you're going to be using um, different decks compared to like Logbait. Logbait is still great, still works there, but I would say like maybe five out of the top 200 players in the world will be running Logbait at any given time, whereas everyone else is running like Minor Poison or something else like that. But yeah, this is one of the best decks to play against Trophy Road players because when you're facing a deficit and you don't have higher level cards, typically what you're able to do is use your Dark Goblin to snipe things from a distance. Also use Bomb Tower, even though Bomb Tower will end up dying to, let's just say, our opponent going in for like an aggressive Golem push. You can still go and apply opposite lane pressure with your Skeleton Barrel and Goblin Barrel and makes them drop a lot of Elixir. Also, Bomb Tower is fantastic against Elite Barbarians, against Balloon, because the Bomb will be able to splash onto the Balloon. And if you drop in the right spot, both towers will hit the Balloon. Overall, a great deck. So... Essentially, what we're going to be trying to do is defend cheaply with cards that are easy to upgrade, like Dark Goblin and Knight and Goblins. Um, the reason why I'm showing Dark Goblin and Goblins in this deck is because they're both boosted. You can run Firecracker here instead of Dark Goblin. You can run Princess instead of Dark Goblin. You can also end up running Dark Goblin itself. I personally prefer Dark Goblin. Um, then I would go Firecracker, and then after that I would go Princess. You can use Skeleton Army instead of Goblins. You can use Guards. You can use Skeletons. You can use Goblin Gang. Personally, I prefer Skeleton Army, but I'm going to be using Goblins today because they are boosted this season. So if you guys want to check out this deck and play it, um, two out of the three cards that we're going to be using are boosted this season. That means that they go to your King Tower level, and uh, they're very, very solid. If you have another building like Inferno Tower or Tesla, you can also run that instead of Bomb Tower. And then lastly, uh, you can run Wall Breakers instead of a Skeleton Barrel or Goblin Barrel, depending on what version you have. You can run Valkyrie or Knight, and then you can also end up running instead of Electric Spirit, Fire Spirit, Ice Spirit, Electric Spirit... Uh, those spirits all work. Snowball is the best, but you can also run Log. Log is great because it also is able to kill a whole bunch of other bait cards, but I like Snowball because even if my opponent's got overlevel cards, I can still make sure that I can knock them back, and I get a lot of benefit from it not even having a card level. Like, if it was level 1 Snowball, and I knock things back, I'd still get value. As you guys can see, it's one of my most underleveled cards, simply because it doesn't matter that much compared to the other stuff. Like, if my Dark Goblin doesn't do damage or my Knight dies, that's really bad. So you want to focus on upgrading your Goblin Barrels, your Knights, and your Dark Goblins, if possible. Those are the cards that I really like. And Goblin, yeah, like, Goblin Barrel as a link condition is really, like, really important. Also, maybe if you're running Goblins instead of Skeleton Army, you want to have it a little bit higher level, so then your opponent can't instantaneously zap it away. If you're running Skeleton Army, the level doesn't matter as much, but the Goblins really do if you're leveling up Goblins. Because if your opponent zaps on your Goblin Barrel or zaps on your Goblins and they die, it's kind of unfortunate. That's also why we have Skeleton Barrel in the deck. So if my opponent has Zap, they have to pick between zapping the Goblin Barrel or zapping the Skeleton Barrel. So it generally gives you a lot of value. Let's jump right into the action and show you guys what's up. Also, we're going to be unboxing a couple things today as well. I end up having uh, a banner box. And then I also end up having a, I guess, the, the chest that you guys saw in my loading screen. So we have a few things to uncover. I'm going to go for goblins immediately and we'll see what's happening. Let's freaking go. Let's get it, baby. Also, I will be giving shout outs to everyone that is um, giving us donations and stuff today. So thank you. Also, this firecracker isn't hitting. Like, that was so whack. <laughs> okay, he's got two of them. He's like, well, one of them missed, so I have to drop more than that. We can activate King Tower here with the firecracker, which is extremely important to do if you guys don't do this. Uh, you're really missing out on a ton of value. This guy's got level 15 cards already. Kind of crazy to think about. I didn't expect our opponents to already have over level level 14 and 15 cards at this rank, but <laughs> it is what it is. Also, if you guys saw, the snowball dug us out of a pretty tricky and sticky situation. Wow. This guy legitimately has all level 14 and 15 cards. Wow. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yo, this is crazy. Isn't that insane? Guys, I don't think I was necessarily mentally ready, or ready for that. That's crazy. So, I should beat him, but... There's always a chance I lose, which would make me super sad, sir. All right, I need to go in for a Goblin Barrel here. And then 
He zapped it? Oh no. Yo, dude, I just... I wasn't mentally ready. He's giving me the BM too. Oh my gosh, guys. Guys, you know the deal. We're gonna get we're gonna get a comeback. We're gonna make this roll in. Hopefully our Dark Goblin doesn't die so we can go in for a skeleton barrel here. I cannot believe I just got BM'd by a uh, mid ladder warrior. That is crazy. You guys can let me know if that's ever been your experience as well. It's kind of funny to have that happen and just be like, wow, I didn't expect it to be that difficult already. <laughs> First game in the arena against overleveled experience. That's what's up, that's what's good. It happens. Um, I'll still win this one, I think. Maybe I'll lose, but I believe that we can make it happen. They're going for a knight here to body block so we don't get three crowned by any shenanigans. The goblin barrel should be able to give us value before he goes in for a zap, which is very nice. Obviously, uh, it's going to be a conundrum if we don't get the skeleton barrel on the tower, so you have to go in right now. I'm also going to go in for a snowball here as well. Maybe we can get the goblins on the tower. He's got arrows and zap and overleveled cards, so this is a problem for sure. All right, we're to go in for a knight. I think if I had played a little bit better and given this guy a little bit more respect, we would have uh, been in a much better spot. But you know, that's not how every game goes. Sometimes you don't really give your opponent respect and then you get clapped. But we're going to have to go in for a snowball here. This dark goblin doesn't die to my snowball. Feels bad, man. Even though it should have. Um, so I need to cycle goblins here into a wizard, which is not going to work. I think I lost. Yeah, I genuinely did lose this game. That's crazy. So first game of the day. Not so successful on my end, simply because I did not give the guy respect and I kind of overcommitted and I didn't expect him to have arrows, zap, and all those other cards. Unless, oh, yes, he's got mirror zap. I was going to say, we're fine. We actually took the tower and then he mirror zapped it. That is, that is a good introduction to mid ladder. So I'm going to go and flex the 20 win emote to let him know that I am better than him. That loss, it hurt my soul a little bit, not going to lie. <laughs> All level 14 cards, every single one of them. And then when we thought we took the tower, he zapped it away with a mirrored zap. That was crazy. Um, it happens. All level 14s, it's all good, man. We'll show you guys how to dominate today. I'm shocked. I can't believe that. I'm actually floored and flabbergasted by the fact that I lost that game at the start. I went into it. I was like, ah, oh, dude, we're chilling. I did not expect to get mirror zapped, which I don't know. <laughs> Maybe you guys are going to laugh at that a little bit. It's fun. It's funny. It happens. Uh, hey, what's up, Oliver? What is going on? Holy heck. So, that last game was hilarious because he started off mirroring off uh, firecrackers. I was like, oh, this guy's just going to clown around and not play very well. <laughs> just not expect that amount of spells. <laughs> upgrade snowball? No, I'm not going to upgrade cards. Um, the reason why I'm not going to upgrade cards is I'm going to give you guys an authentic experience. This deck should be able to win almost all these games without any problems if you just play well and you focus up. I think the one thing that I'm not necessarily used to is if I play better than my opponent... I usually win every single time with, like, even level cards. I think you aren't allowed to make any mess-ups when you're playing with under-level cards. And that last game shows you. Like, if you just have a mental lapse and you're not thinking as much as you typically would, like, you will lose those games and you have to play a lot better at under-leveled ranks. Just because um, if your opponent somehow ends up having, like, three or four different spells and then they've got, like, over-level cards... Um, your cards just need to be performing at maximum capacity at all points in time. Like you have to be making sure that you overestimate how much elixir you need on defense, because if you don't, you're going to lose the game. So that's something that I just learned there. Uh, obviously, adjusting from you know top ladder, path of legends, um, definitely different than going into an experience where it's like, oh, you know, I have just enough elixir, I can make optimal plays. No, you need to uh, just sit there and be like, okay. I need to conserve an excessive amount of elixir so I can always defend. So I'm going to go Skeleton Barrel here because I think he's going to drop his arrows or whatever on the Skeleton Barrel so then I can snowball back the balloon. Uh, I'm just going to make sure he can't freeze or anything. He does go for a zap, but I hope the Dark Goblin runs away. Dark Goblin? Dark Goblin. Can we talk about this for a second? You, uh, you kind of didn't do what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to run away from the bomb. You're not supposed to stay inside it, bro. Not a very smart uh, Dark Goblin there, but also kind of funny. All right, so we're going to go for a knight here. We'll go in for a goblin barrel as well. We'll go for an electric spirit to go and pull mini P.E.K.K.A. And then we're going to go for a dark goblin off to the side. So he does log that, which is pretty good for us because we can go for a skeleton barrel as well. And then... I don't know. Look at, looking pretty good. Looking pretty awesome for us. I think that this is going to be a spot where I just go in for a knight and then goblin barrel and play super aggressive. And if he goes in for a balloon, you just drop this, uh, this bomb tower placement. And even if they go in for, like, a log, you just snowball, and then you're fine. Okay, that snowball was actually, um, <laughs> unnecessary in every regard. <laughs> I thought it one-shot my bomb tower. 
<laughs> I had no faith in my bomb tower. Not only was that unnecessary, but it also completely countered with the bomb tower placement at a level 10 bomb tower. So I'm happy. I'm actually a little bit happy that my bomb tower survived there. I had no confidence in it though. Oh my gosh. That snowball asserted dominance over the arena. That was funny as heck. That was actually hilarious. Okay, so let's go and uh, go and collect these cards and see what we can get. Three Musketeers, not a vibe. Three Musketeers are a very fun card to play, but they're not very good for this uh, deck. Yo, we got the Goblin Barrow. Let's go. That's what we love to see. So Inferno Tower, Electro Spirit, both great cards. Also Skeleton Barrel and Goblin Barrel. It's like Clash Trial knew what I wanted. It's like they knew what I wanted out here. All right, get Shop Offer. Let's see what we can get if there's anything for free. Is there any freebie here? Yeah, let's go. Give it me the freebie. Skeleton Dragon is one of the worst cards in the game. I think they need a buff. Barbarians, underrated, but also not great. It's kind of only good with like Royal Hogs or Lava Hound decks. Typically, Lava Hound decks at top ladder. Elixir Golem is the worst win condition in the game at top ladder. It just doesn't get value. And Battle Healer, it's the only card that uh, Elixir Golem really works with. But still not great. We're going to go and snag the Snowballs. Um, and then always make sure, like, if you're trying to level up your cards quickly and you're trying to make sure you maximize your utility, always go and request things every single time on the timer. Like, so every, every seven hours, always be requesting stuff. Um, when you go to sleep, request it before you go to sleep. And then when you wake up, do one again. Always play in these special challenges if you're trying to level up your stuff because it gives you a ton of free rewards. I don't know if you guys see this right here, but you get a lot of gold. You get a lot of things that you can use to upgrade. This is a free, um, I think it's a legendary token. You can just upgrade a legendary card for free there. Like, really good. That's worth uh, 40,000 gold, I think, if I'm correct. Maybe that's common. I'm not sure. I hope it's, <laughs> I hope it's a legendary. Maybe I'm wrong. But anyway, uh, all, I'm, all I'm saying is it's always worth, always worth. Is Bloon good? Bloon is not that great in underleveled uh, arenas. Bloon is really not that great in underleveled arenas because it dies to wizards and it dies to um, cards that are overleveled anti-air cards that everyone's running, like witches, wizards, minion hordes. Uh, as you can see, speaking of the devil, speaking of the witch, <laughs> here's the thing. All right, guys. The the oh my gosh. All right, I'll read those donations afterwards. Um, E-barbs get shredded. E-barbs get shredded. Look at the bomb tower. This is why I like the deck. This is why this deck slaps for me. It's not necessarily like the best deck in the game at higher levels, but if you're trying to push up to like 7,500 trophies or maybe even like top 10,000 in the world and hit ultimate champion for the first time ever, this is a fantastic deck to upgrade. It is so good. And it's always been strong. You can even put in like a, a golden knight instead of the knight and then you'll have like a top top 1000 deck in the world that people run once you eventually unlock champions so honestly the deck is great so i i wouldn't complain about it at all wait we get to show you an amazing bomb tower placement against the, the elixir golem so watch this guys wait to last possible second and then drop it off to the side and then we go in for a dark goblin here and you're gonna notice something i separate the bomb tower um and the elixir golem away from the battle healer so I make sure that the bomb tower is going to be able to lock directly on top of the Elixir Golem. So the Elixir Golem dies quickly. So then we can focus on the Battle Healer. And the Battle Healer is not healing up the Elixir Golem. If you let the Elixir Golem go near the, the um, Battle Healer, then what happens is the Battle Healer heals up the Elixir Golem. And then even if the bomb tower is shooting everything, the bomb tower can't finish it off. So you need to make sure that you're doing what I did. Also, if you're using the boosted cards for this season, you probably want to be cycling your overleveled cards a little bit more. Like my overleveled uh, aggressive... Dark Goblin is just going to be a lot better than dropping more like Electro Spirits, for instance, or Skeleton Barrels. The Dark Goblin is such a good card in this type of situation. Also, try to go for your Knight in the middle. This might seem really weird to you guys, but it's what I like to do. Watch, the Mega Knight's going to go in. Oh, yeah, I was going to say the Mega Knight is going to go and push um, the, the Knights. And what happens is, since the Mega Knight pushes the Knights, then your both of your towers are going to be able to shoot the Mega Knight because the Mega Knight will be within vicinity of both towers. But if you drop your Knight really high up, they can drop units at top of the river, like right on top of the river, and those units will immediately get on top of your Knight or whatever you're countering the, the Mega Knight with. And even though the Mega Knight doesn't jump, your, the other units will jump on top of you really quick, and then you're just going to lose the game. So it's extremely important if you want to optimize your defense against someone that's running Mega Knight to drop your units in the middle, like a little bit lower, then you don't end up having that issue where the Mega Knight is going to get supported by other stuff 
or necessarily you're not going to be able to use both your towers to kill the Mega Knight a little bit quicker. Always engage both towers if you want optimal defensive potential. And uh, yeah, super easy win. So this was not a problem. Um, it's funny that we lost the first game. It's like I was gassing up the deck the entire time and then it just showed that if you don't focus, you just get so destroyed by these players. It's crazy. <laughs> it's more of an accurate experience, right? This is not like a YouTube video where people cut things out or whatever. This is just straight up like you guys get to see it as it is. You get to see the losses, the wins, everything. So yeah, this is a, a, a pushing up the trophy rank stuff type of stuff or for Arena 15. Which I think, to be 100% honest about it, like if you have people that uh, make videos on like best deck for Arena 15 and they are more of a casual player, they might not really have a good deck. So being able to see it live will probably give you guys a little bit more confidence jumping into the arena and seeing what the actual experience is like instead of someone just like pushing up with overlevel cards or whatever or um, cutting out games from the Arena 15. You guys get to see how it is. So hopefully that's helpful for you. Um, oh, it just went black screen. Oh no. Sometimes this happens. That was not supposed to happen. Okay. Guys, we have a bit of a conundrum. I did not expect that to happen here. If this fixes, I'll be very happy. Um, so Eric, thank you for being a subscriber. Hoping you're having a great day. Do your peck advice. I squeeze her into a minor poison deck and have been winning very easily. Yeah, minor poison is the best deck in the game right now. It is extremely overpowered, but it should get nerfed eventually. One second. I need to fix my black magic. One of the other things uh, is I was going to say is like usually when you have issues like this, you're able to just have fixes. Oh, thank God. It worked. I'm so thankful. So I'm going to be real with you guys for a second. I thought I was going to have to restart the stream. So like for videos, right? We just cut those things out. We're like, you guys don't dis get to see the existential crisis that I have in my face when my, my stuff malfunctions. And oh man it's so scary and sad and bad but here we are we're living life uh vicariously through this game and fortunately not being in too much pain that was that was nice that was really really cool let's freaking go black magic yeah so the black magic recording software costs like 500 dollars, and um i i told you guys before like i invest every ounce of money that i get from sponsorships and then the creator code back into my channel so that's why i have like really high-end software but Sometimes the software, like, I don't know. Sometimes it malfunctions or it'll have issues or there's just like small things when you're recording at such a high, um, I don't know. You're recording at such high quality. Sometimes things will go wrong. Uh, what's the best anime according to you? Oh my gosh, this guy just went for a defensive goblin barrel. The best anime according to me is probably One Punch Man. I just think it's incredible. I think that the storyline, everything about it was just fun to watch. Best Arena 17 deck, please. This deck works all the way to 7,500 trophies. So if you want a deck that's underleveled, that can beat no matter what your opponent's got, as long as you focus, this is a great deck to play. So I'm running this right now for a good reason. I want to make sure that I have a deck for you guys that you can play to the very top and not switch your deck. There's a huge issue if you guys are like, what's the best deck at Arena 16 after you already upgraded an Arena 15 deck and then you go and upgrade a level... Uh, arena 16 deck that's completely different why would you ever want to do that that makes all of your resources kind of wasted you ended up spending so much resources and money upgrading one deck so you should be focusing on that one deck and have that last you as long as possible don't be upgrading a deck that's not going to work you know in the later stages don't do that to yourself so, yeah this deck will carry you all the way to the very top of ladder if you want to use golden knight eventually or skeleton king instead of knight uh probably golden knight instead of knight at the higher arenas but this deck is just so good that you, you don't really have to make switches. Um, actually, by higher arenas, I'm meaning like once you are like top 1,000 to 2,000 in the world in Path of Legends. If you get to that rank and you're good enough, then you can maybe make some switches to this deck. But I wouldn't switch much. I think it's just a really, really good deck, and that's why I'm suggesting it today. I really expect that you're able to show losses in your videos as well. Many Clash Royale YouTubers only show their wins and not their losses. Yeah, hey, I understand why they do that. Um, like... A lot of times they want it to be more entertaining and stuff. But for me, I don't really care if the game is a win or a loss. I just want it to be entertaining in general. And I think losses can be very entertaining and funny as well. I think um, in the next couple videos, you guys are going to see me get absolutely destroyed by a couple players when I think I'm going to win. And then um, it doesn't really work out as planned. 
But I, th I think that those type of videos and that type of content is just creates good laughs. And it also, for me as a viewer, because I always try to look at it from a lens of like, okay, if I'm watching content, do I want to watch someone reliably win every single time and I know that they're going to win? Well, it doesn't really make sense because it gets boring after a while, right? They're, that's just not, not the type of content that I would want to watch, so that's not the content that I put up. I try to um, mix up the games, put in a lot of mistakes in my videos if we can meme them, whether it's something that my editor makes fun of me for, or um, we can just review the mistake after, after the win or the loss, and that's kind of, uh, kind of what I do. Like, for instance, one of the most recent videos that I just published, I made a mistake against an Electro Giant Mother Witch deck. And I went in for, I, I think I went in for uh, an incorrect placement of Rascals after I dropped Arch. No, no, no. So what I did is I knew that he had Tornado in his deck, but I forgot that he had Tornado in Cycle. And I dropped Rascals and Archers together, and he was able to Tornado it into the Electro Giant instead of just waiting for him to Tornado one of them and then dropping the other one afterward to damage down the Electro Giant. So he tornadoed the Rascals and the Archers instead of me just dropping the Rascals, let him tor tornado the Rascals, and then go Archers afterward to kill the Electro Giant. So I pointed that mistake out in my video. It almost cost me the loss. And uh, yeah, I try, to, I try to not put flawless gameplay in my videos because, I mean, I could just keep repeating games until I get flawless games, but that's not how the game works, you know? You want people to see that everyone makes mistakes, and a lot of the mistakes you can learn from, too. Um, sometimes, if you're just showing wins all the time, it's hard to really figure out mistakes because there aren't any really in the gameplay. Or it's like harder to realize them, I guess. Nice haircut. Yeah, I'm going to get a different haircut soon. Don't worry. <laughs> sometimes this gets a little bit longer. And it looks really good sometimes. And sometimes it looks really bad. It depends. Um, but I appreciate you saying that, man. Thanks for the vibes. Have you played Clash of Clans? I have not. I don't play uh, Clash of Clans or base builders that much. Not a huge fan of base builder games in general. All right, so we're just going to Snowball here. As you guys can see, Snowball is just an extremely good card. So when you use our Electro Spirit, it should be able to chain on to most of his stuff. And look at that. Sublime Defense. I genuinely think that Electro Spirit is better in this type of situation where you're playing against people with really scummy and dirty decks. If someone's going to go for an aggressive clone at the very start of the match, you probably want to end up having an Electro Spirit. Okay, so Snowball is going to be good because it is able to damage down the Archer, push it away from the tower that he's already damaged. Not bad. Remember, he just dropped his Zap, so he's probably going to have another small spell. Uh, I'm just going to go in for a Skeleton Barrel here and try to get some value. He might go in for a Golem and Double Elixir, but he can't afford it in singles, so I think I'm okay. At least I don't think he can afford it. If he can, then we're going to have some serious problems that we need to talk about right now, but I don't think so. As I said, I kind of want to cycle as many Dark Goblins as possible since they are a little bit overpowered at level 13 here because I am using the boosted card for the season. Again, you can use Firecracker or Princess inside instead of the, the Dark Goblin if you need to. Uh, heck, I genuinely think you could even use a Musketeer if you have it leveled up, and that wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. It's not great because you want to end up having more Log Bait, but it would work. That Golem uh, gets pulled by the Bomb Tower placement. If you guys did not know, that was an extremely optimal Bomb Tower placement. He's going to Fireball there, but I still don't even think he breaks through. Wow, Bomb Tower at a low amount of levels is still ridiculously overpowered if you know their correct placements. I'm winning with level 10 cards, guys. I'm literally winning with like some level 10 cards. Okay, he's got level 10 cards as well. Okay. It's just a couple of his cards that are stronger, like his Golem, for instance. Or maybe his... Yeah, I guess his Golem and Fireball were overleveled and his Witch were. But... I guess that one push, when he dropped an overleveled Golem and an overleveled Fireball into a level 10 Bomb Tower, we were still able to hold the door. Like, that works. This Bomb... Oh my gosh, he missed it. Okay, well, that also happens. When you're playing against lower level people and they've got higher level card levels, a lot of times they're just not going to play perfect. And if they don't play perfect, you can just win more reliably in those situations. Hmm. Yeah, just not very scary. I guess I should have went for a pre-snowball, but it's fine. I'm going to go for another Dark Goblin here and then try to go for a Skeleton Barrel. High chance he tries to, like, zap it on top of the Dark Goblin and then Fireball or something. I don't know. Let's just go Goblin Barrel here. We know he's going to probably go in for a Skeleton Army, so let's pre-Snowball if he even has it in Cycle. Oh, he just pre-zapped. All right, he's not going to be fast enough for the Dark Goblin. I think the Dark Goblin locks on a tower for one hit. Really? Oh my gosh. See, there's Ultimate Champion players that don't react to a Dark Goblin fast enough, but I guess this guy's built different or something. So we're going to go in for a snowball on the skeleton army that eventually has to come down sometime. Oh no. Tragedy has befallen upon us. I think I'm going to lose. This has been going really poorly for me. This defense has to be rock solid. I don't know if I can do it. Okay, fortunately, uh, we might have a rock solid defense here. 
That's a lot of cloned up crap though, dude. What are you doing? That's a lot of cloned up stuff. This guy's crazy. All right, so the Dark Goblin should be able to pop off. We're going to go in for the Snowball, and we eventually walk away the win. I cannot believe. I think the man mere cloned in my face. The disrespect. Also, Eric, thanks again for becoming a member of the channel. I do appreciate that. And then Kunal. What's up, dude? He's given us the devil emote, and he's given us 20 bucks. Thank you, man. <laughs> Sir Tag, you need to hit the gritty and get sturdy. Oh, man. Okay, dude. All right. Whatever you say, brother. Shout out. I love you, says uh, Doss. Thank you, man. Dude, uh, there is one guy named uh, Doss. His last name was Doss, and he played tennis in New England. He was so insanely talented. It was incredible. It, like, I... Yeah, dude, you're reminding me of him. I was scared whenever I played against him. I got destroyed in seconds. It was not very fun. Um... Shout out, I love you. Sir Tag is a big W. Thank you, man. Thank you guys for all the positivity here. I love you guys. I use your Rascal's fake Graveyard Rascal's Graveyard deck. It's the best. Yeah, that Graveyard deck is so good, man. It's played at top ladder, and people do not expect Rascal's plus Graveyard. It is such a strong card composition. It's not my deck, by the way. As I said at the very start of the video, a top, like, I think a top 50 player in the world used it. So it wasn't my deck. But thank you, man. Yo, JD! Thank you for becoming a member as well. Hell yeah. You love to see the vibes out here. You guys are incredible. Okay, so this guy activated King Tower with Royal Giant. Still not the scariest thing in the world. I'm just gonna go for a Dark Goblin here. It's gonna Earthquake. That's a little bit more scary. Substantially more scary, if you ask me. But here's the thing. The Knight is sturdy. You guys were asking me. You guys were saying, like, Jake, get sturdy out here. We got the Knight, so we are sturdy. It's not maybe in the way that you want. Okay. Okay, Dark Goblin. Okay, Dark Goblin! Okay, Dark Goblin, do your thing. That is crazy. It melted every one of his cards. See, that's why you got to use the boosted cards every single season. If you have a higher king level and you don't want to spend money upgrading cards, sometimes you just have to build a deck each season with uh, boosted cards or try to integrate them into your deck if they work well. So, yeah, that's, that's huge. You're one of the most positive people I've ever seen. Thank you, man. I Honestly, the way that I see it in life, Positivity and negativity, pessimism and optimism are self-fulfilling prophecies. I genuinely believe if you're negative all the time, you are more bound to have negative interactions in your life because that's what you're looking for. For instance, if you're like, I'm never going to be able to hit this serve in and you're playing tennis and you just, you know, your serves will probably go out more often because you're not mentally prepared to hit a good serve. Same thing in any sport, same thing in math test, for instance. If you're like, damn, I'm going to fail this test. This thing really sucks. I can't believe the problems are so unfair. Like, I can't believe he only gave us an out, like uh, three days to study for this huge exam. And you're probably going to have a really bad interaction. But if you're like, you know what? This isn't optimal, but I'm going to try my hardest. And I'm going to be proud of what I accomplish given the time constraints that I have. You're going to have a much better interaction. Also, like Mike and Bob Bryan, I don't know if you guys know who they were or who they are. Uh, they were professional tennis players. And they were always talking about how they were visualizing a perfect return before they actually ended up playing out the point. And because they visualized something good happening, it was more likely for that good thing to happen. And they ended up having better interactions in life, and they were some of the most successful tennis players in the entire world. And that was one of their secrets. And um, it was just really cool to see that. Like, I don't know, but guys, I, I, I've, I've talked about it before, but I think positivity is just like a huge thing that a lot of people need to start integrating more in life. Um, I try to be as positive as possible in life. It's not necessarily always what happens. Sometimes I'm negative. Sometimes I do have bad moments. Sometimes bad things happen in life that you can't really control. But as long as you're trying to frame things in a better way, even if it isn't good, you're just trying to frame it in a better way instead of always searching for the negatives, life becomes 10 times better. That's how it is, man. Um, yeah, I like talking about that at least once a stream and just telling you guys what I feel. Um, it was kind of cool to bring in... Our I remembered some examples. I don't know. I usually don't remember. I just say the same thing most of the time. But yeah, that's cool. It's your foe. Please give a shout out. Yo, Zishan. Uh, did I actually play against you? Did you really? No, Zishan. I don't think I played against you. <laughs> I'll be real for a sec. A lot of times people are like, I'm your opponent. And you never are. And it's, it's pretty funny. It's cute. But thank you. Uh, thank you for trolling me. It's uh, my birthday today. What a better way to spend it than watching Sir Tags as Player 3. Player 3, I hope you have a fantastic birthday. And uh, yeah, man, hopefully it's a day that you deserve. Yo, Michael, what's up, dude? 
Let's go. Hello, Tag. New fan. I was wondering if this deck will fare well against Loon players. And what would the defense look like? Yo, Mike. The defense... You already know, dude. You already know that this deck definitely does do very well against Balloon. I love you as well, man. If you guys don't know Michael. He's literally like one of my favorite people that I've met throughout my entire experience. And, uh, and Twitch, YouTube, all that stuff. This guy is just like one of the best human beings. So thank you first off for the $5. And um, the, the defense against Balloon is you want to... If, if you want to rewatch the very first game... Or not the first game. No, this is the second game. I missed the snowball. Yeah, it was the second game I missed the snowball. You just dropped the bomb tower here. And it fully counters a balloon, even if the balloon is higher level. I did not... I, I thought the balloon would one-shot my bomb tower, and it didn't. And then the bomb tower fully countered the balloon with the bomb exploding and having both towers shoot the balloon. So if you end up dropping a bomb tower there, you don't have to do anything else. As long as your towers are both targeting the balloon, you're going to win the game. So it's a really cool thing to do. And uh, yeah, I would just highly encourage you to do that. Also, if you're playing against Elixir Golem, you guys can use this bomb tower placement. And notice how it pulls. Notice how far that is? It's literally in the other side. It's like tiles in the other side. Look at that. Look at that. Bomb tower placement. Melting Elixir Golems for days, my dudes. And then all of his other cards will go directly down the middle. So then the battle healer will be separated. So then, you know, the Elixir Golems here, the battle healer is here, and the battle healer won't be able to heal up the Elixir Golem. And then they lose. And then it's GG. That's just how it is. This deck is so freaking good. It is so overpowered. It's even better when you end up using like Firecracker or something. It's cool that we were able to show how to destroy Electric Golem. Um, will this deck hold up well versus Balloon players? Yeah, it works really well. Especially since you have Snowball as well, and Dark Goblin has added benefits. Since I have Snowball, the matchup is actually in my favor, 9 times out of 10, I would say. I'm going to go Dark Goblin in the middle because it kills the Goblin Gang. And then we can go for a Knight here afterward. reason that I'm dropping Knight off to the side is so he doesn't go in for any uh, Tornado shenanigans. I'm going to go in for another Bomb Tower. It should be able to pull the Electric Golem. The Dark Goblin will be able to take the entire tower here. As you guys can see, we're kind of just stomping this guy. There isn't much he can do. Um, I still think it was hilarious that the first game of the day was like the most authentic mid-ladder experience that you'll ever get in your life. And then we started to wreck people. <laughs> oh, man. I'm grateful for that, honestly. I'm glad. It humbled me, you know? Sometimes you need those moments where you're just like, yo, I'm going to wreck everyone, and you're going to climb up, and then this just doesn't happen. You just get stomped. You're like, oh, well, I guess I got to focus a little more. But yeah, once we uh, put... Once we put in some focus, we put pedal to the metal, and we earned all of these medals, rushing up the ranks, stealing our opponent's trophies, and earning some pretty good rewards. Respectable, right? Do you have a good updated website to find the best decks for each arena? I should do that. You know what? How about... Ah, I kind of want to do that. I kind of want to create a website. I don't know if that would be useful or beneficial. You know what? If Clash Royale ends up doing really well in the next couple updates, or if there's a brand new game... I might consider hiring someone and building out a really good website. I know Royal API has done something well, but like I want to have personalized suggestions from pro players. I would hire professional players to give deck advice, suggestions, write up some guides. I kind of want to do that. Kind of want to do that. I don't know. You guys can let me know. Uh, usually I like making YouTube videos, but I don't know. I think that I think that would be a vibe, like something that's personalized from pro players instead of just stats. Because there'll be a difference between stats and something that's personalized from pro players attached with my name and stuff like that. I don't know. I'd consider doing that. Um, I have no idea if that would work. I don't know if you guys would want to do that. Um, I also have to wonder if like I spend like a few thousand dollars doing it. Um, what's the monetization there? How would that work? Right. So I'd have to talk to some of my friends and figure that out and see if it would be uh, a feasible thing to do, right? You always got to like figure out things that you want to do and then see if they work out. So if you guys didn't know, I actually tried a Wild Rift channel and I blew like $100 every video and I got nothing from it. It was very, very fun. But if you want to type in Sir Tag Wild Rift on YouTube, you'll find it out, right? Like I was pretty good at the game. I created some great content, um, but the, the audience just wasn't there. And then I lost a lot from it. Oh, we were talking about how to beat Balloon. Um, unfortunately, this bomb tower placement is getting splapped by the Mega Knight, so not necessarily the best for us. But I still think it's going to work out. So yeah, even in the worst case scenario where you're playing against an overleveled Mega Knight, overleveled Balloon, as you can see, super easy stuff. Royal API and Deck Shop are okay, but if you make a new website with actual input, I will actually use it. Yeah, dude, I, um, the thing is, like, I wouldn't have too much time to, like, write up the stuff myself. So I would have to approve everything. But at the same time, I would have to hire pros that are extremely, like, capable of doing it. And I'm sure you guys know this, 
And if you don't, then this won't. This probably shouldn't come out of surprise to you guys. But professional players that play video games for a um, <laughs> for a living, most of them do not have like extremely good writing skills or work ethic or like they just want to play video games, you know. Which is no blow to them. That's just that's how it is, right? Like you just want to play video games. You want to have fun. That's what you signed up for. So like writing a lot of stuff might feel like I don't know. I, I'm trying to think of like who would want to do it or who would be good at enough to do it. But there aren't too many that uh, cross my mind, to be honest. The both towers engaging on the, the uh, Mega Knight is incredible. And then hopefully the Bob Tower splashes on everything, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. So we're going to go in for an Electro Spirit here, and then I should be able to defend this. So if you guys noticed that defense, it was good. That defense mechanically was perfect. Pretty proud of that, honestly. So. If you guys are wondering, like, a blueprint to defend Elixir Golem, Mega Knight, I just showed you. Um, works pretty well. We're going to go in for a Skeleton Barrel again on the right-hand side. The Dark Goblin should be able to put in a lot of work. Uh, I think he's going to drop a small spell here. If he ends up dropping, like, a Barbarians or anything, I typically like to go for Dark Goblin or Firecracker or Princess. And that kills it. And then what happens is, then it will also give me Counter Push as well. I'm dropping a cheap one Elixir Cost card. Even though the Electro Spirit doesn't do that much damage, you're still getting a lot of value. So even if the Electro Spirit or Ice Spirit doesn't have high card levels, it doesn't matter. Because you're still getting the stun from it. That's all that really matters. You want the stun. The stun is a lot of fun. That's what's up. Alright, so... Snowball this back. I'm gonna go Skeleton Barrel their side. I'm gonna have to do this. Probably going for this. Not good for us. This is actually quite bad. Try to go for a Goblin Barrel here and then maybe get back to a Knight. So I should be able to Snowball and win. Okay, he's just gonna lose the game. Never mind. <laughs> I was like, he's gonna defend the Goblin Barrel and not have to Snowball the Tower. He's just like... I, you know, I did not believe that he would go in for an Onslaught of Aggression with a Elixir Gloom and Balloon that were definitely not gonna reach my tower in time. I underestimated him. I underestimated him. That is a good win. Um, on to the next one. Can you use the deck that I made in Trash Your Treasure, says Binos? Yo, dude, you're actually here. Yo, it's so cool to see people's decks that I use in YouTube videos come on stream and be a part of the action. Thank you so much for the incredible deck, dude. That deck was awesome. Really a top tier deck and uh, one of the highest rated decks that I have ever seen in Trash Your Treasure. So huge W. Um, Three different win conditions plus a bunch of super expensive defensive cards. Yeah, uh, that that was pretty insane. I can't believe he ended up having like the Mega Knight, Infernal Tower, Barbarians, Minion Horde, Sparky. That's just an extremely unfortunately defensive deck for him. Do you think Mega Knight should cost 8 Elixir? No, nope. I think Mega Knight is pretty fair and balanced. Um, as you can see, even though we've got like, you know, not the highest level cards, we're still able to deal with it pretty easily. Um, I think that Mega Knight, you guys just need to learn how to counter it um, using like the correct placements. And then it's really, really fun to beat Mega Knight players. Mid ladder becomes easy when you have a knight in your deck and you level up your knight and you drop your knight in the middle and they drop a mega knight on offense and then the mega knight goes into the knight and then the mega knight gives them a negative four elixir trade. That's a pretty good experience for me. I like that a lot. I rate that actually. All right, so we're gonna do this. We're gonna go for an electro spirit and then go goblins. Should be able to kill that. I dislike how uh, the emotes sometimes body block the uh, tower HP. I can't see the tower HP right now, so. If he continues to do that, I will mute his emojis. I usually don't do that, but I'm considering it. Not gonna, um... Not gonna lie, seeing opponents getting grounded a pulp every video makes me hee hee ha. Oh, man. <laughs> you are a sadistic sir. <laughs> I like it, though. Uh, I Honestly, I don't actually grind all of my opponents at pulp. Most of the games that I put in the video, um, I cut out a lot of super easy wins just because I want the games to be a little bit more entertaining. I try to put in more losses, I try to cut out wins, I try to have more of a fun time in my videos, where, you know, like, you might not know what's going to happen in the games. So, most of the videos are back and forth and playing against good players. Like, for instance, if you watch my most recent videos on my YouTube channel, not the Trash or Treasure ones, because those are deck reviews, but the one, like, new Bridge Bam deck, I played against, like, Coochie Koo and other top-level players, some of the better players in the world that... You know, the, the matchups were back and forth. Against the 2.6 Hog Raider player when I was running Ram Rider Monk, the guy was a top 90 player in the world, and he BM'd me the entire time thinking he was winning, and then he got destroyed, and it was really funny. I'll actually put the link in that for that video in the chat. It was one of the best videos that I've created on my YouTube channel, so I'm sure you guys will enjoy that. 
Um, I'm spamming a little bit more aggressively than I should be here, but it's working out cr kind of well. Wow, yeah, it worked a lot better than I thought. So I'm just going to keep going for bomb towers here. Here's a uh, tidbit of information for you guys. If you're playing against someone that's running P.E.K.K.A., ideally, you want to go and use your goblins on top of the battle ramp, if you can. It's just a lot better. And the reason why it's a lot better... Oh my gosh, Dark Goblin just killed the Magic Archer. Um, reason why it's a lot better is you're dropping two Elixir on top of the, uh, the battle ram coming at you. And the battle ram is going to get a negative two trade. And if they drop like a zap, it still doesn't kill the goblins. So goblins are extremely overpowered against battle ram. And then when they try to go in for their P.E.K.K.A. or whatever, you kind of want to use your Inferno Tower, Bomb Tower, Cannon on defense. I typically will use my Cannon on defense against P.E.K.K.A.s. And then I will use my Goblins on defense against the Battle Ram. And then that defense is just way more cost efficient. And they can't necessarily break through the Cannon because the Cannon will pull the P.E.K.K.A. And if they try to poison on top of Goblins, the Goblins will die. But they won't poison on Goblins if they're going in for Battle Ram. They're not going to go Battle Ram poison. They will go in for a P.E.K.K.A. plus poison because they're building up a bigger push and it's worth it. Because the P.E.K.K.A. will stay alive a lot longer. But the Battle Ram will just die and it won't give them any value. So essentially what I'm trying to say is go in for your building against the P.E.K.K.A. so then they can't poison it. Uh, and then the P.E.K.K.A. will just get deleted and you'll win the game. That's just uh, something to keep in mind. So we're just going to cycle really fast because I have 10 Elixir so he's dead. Game is just over. Um, GG. I was already back to another Goblin Barrel after dropping one more Skeleton Barrel. GG. 21 emote. Flex. <laughs> On an next one. Today's my birthday, says Cameron. Damn. I mean, there are 1,300 people here. So, you know, there's probably going to be a couple people with a birthday today. That's kind of crazy to think about that there will always be someone with a birthday every day I stream. Usually, likely more than one. <laughs> uh, happy birthday and hope you have a fantastic day, dude. I watch you for a long time. Love to see the amount of content that's gotten you better and better over the years, says Eric. Yeah, dude. And that's what's up. It's just going to continue to get better. That's what's going to happen. Why is Magic Archer your favorite card? I think it's perfectly balanced. I think it's one of those cards that will consistently stay strong. And if you play it well, you'll get rewarded with more damage by dropping it in the right placements. I don't know. I like the fact that it can die to Fireball, but it can also do immediate, like, infinite damage to towers piercing through your opponent's units. I love that. I love the, the fact that there's a dichotomy that is completely differentiated based off of skill. Like, I want a deck or a card to be good based off of how good you are at the game. That's good for me. I like that. I like um, it not just being overpowered in general like a Golden Knight or a Skeleton King where if you just drop the card, you're probably going to get a value unless you're terrible at the game. Um, you know, like I, I like it being like, okay, if I'm good at the game, I get value. If I'm bad, well, I'm going to feel like the card is trash. That That's how it should be in my opinion. Keeps the game more entertaining for me. I've watched all the videos on your channel. Start posting twice a day, brother. I actually have a second YouTube channel, man. So this second channel is more so training editors or more so throwing in games that weren't making the main channel because I record a ton of games for YouTube. I put the most entertaining wins, losses, whatever it is. Um, a lot of the more boring wins get put on my second YouTube channel because I want to still give you guys a showcasing of those matchups because a lot of people want to see how to win those sometimes matchups that are long and drudgerous and not necessarily very fun and high octane. So for instance, if I'm playing against a graveyard poison player with tornado, tombstone, ice wizard, generally the game's going to go really long and it'll be pretty boring and I just don't put it on my YouTube videos. Even if it's going to be a good win, even if it's an instructional win, those games just don't go on my YouTube channel because personally I get bored by it. If I get bored by it, I expect my viewers to get bored by it. It doesn't go in the video. But on the second YouTube channel, I don't really necessarily care as much about viewership. I just want to have a high quality video and show some extra games that I had sitting around that I, you know, they're worth putting on the main channel, but they aren't, you know, at my caliber of like, wow, I want to sit down and for a lunch break and watch it, you know? Um, ideally, you want to have games that are instructional, so then everyone that wants to watch the video will still watch the video just to learn, but also you want to have games that, you know, people will want to watch if they don't play the game anymore. And that's kind of the mix that I have. I want it to be fun and also informative at the same time. And that's what uh, all my main channel videos are. I think the second channel videos, they're more so, uh, they're still sometimes fun, but some of the games are more informative. All right, we're gonna go for a snowball here as well. We should just be fine. I mean, I think I win this. If you guys didn't know, you can go for skeleton barrels on the other side from the side that you're not working on. And you'll bait out like a Inferno Tower, I guess, in this spot. 
But generally, I'll bait out... Oh, yeah. He dropped Firecracker and Furry Tower. So a lot of people will end up not responding to it, and then they'll lose their entire tower to a Skeleton Barrel or a Goblin Barrel because they don't really identify how much damage Skeleton Barrels do. Um, or they'll overspend, and because if their decks are clunky mid-ladder warrior decks and they don't really have cost-efficient trades for the Skeleton Barrel, then you're going to put yourself in a position where you can take the tower that you're actually going for. So you bait out Elixir or you bait out counters by going to the other side with your cheap bait cards, and it works so well. So I'll be starting to do that a little bit more. Admittedly, I haven't been doing that too much today, so that's my fault. Um, but as you guys can see, it's a great play. Why does Firecracker react like me while giving exams? Yeah, it freaks out and panics. I don't know, man. Yo, yo, yo. Can you show the deck? Uh, you can go and rewind to the very start of the video and see the deck then. All right, we're going to go in for an Electro Spirit and then we should be fine. I think the Knight will clutch up. Hey, never mind. This is really bad. Uh, not an ideal circumstance with that Dark Prince doing that amount of damage, but it is what it is. Um, you live, you learn. You always hopefully get better interactions. So we're going to go in for a Dark Goblin and then try to go for an Electric Spirit to pull back the majority of the minions. Fortunately for us, he massively messes up and overestimates the fact that I wasn't going to allow him to go for Rage. That's huge. Probably drop a Mega Knight or something. Going to go for a Witch. Well, that's something, right? <laughs> that is a card. That is a level 14 card, my dudes. Let's go. Let's get it. Let's get that bread, baby. All right. Bomb tower placement optimal. Let's go. You already know. We're going to have to go goblins off to the side. Oh, no. 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 The knight died to the level 14 witch, dudes. He's going to have minor. Why? No. Miss me with this deck, bro. <laughs> what? Okay, level 14 Witch is a hated card for me. I do not enjoy. I think I might have lost this because I messed up at the start, and that would be my fault, but hopefully that's not the case. All right. I got to go and take two towers because I'm not defending the left-hand tower, so... This is my best attempt. My best attempt. All right, I'm really, 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 really focused because I don't want to lose this game. If I go Dark Goblin here, it should kill everything, especially if he gives me a Snowball like that. So he's going to Rage for sure. Bad Rage, of course. We outplayed him. Skeleton Barrel here. Goblin Barrel again. Just going to try to take the right-hand tower since we have the Dark Goblin counter-pushing. The Dark Goblin's counter-pushing, it could give us enough trade. Oh, that was terrible, Dark Goblin on my end. I massively messed up. Severely overcommitted. I can't defend that tower. From the minor. Alright, so hypothetically, let's do this. Snowball on the witch. Oh no. Wait, not bad. Not terrible, right? All those cards are kind of counter pushing the wrong side. Oh, he's gonna try to three crown me. Okay. But what if I take your tower? And then I defend this somehow. <laughs> I don't think I can. <laughs> I did not expect him to mirror up an elixir golem, dudes. It's not in the cards for us. Not in the order of operations. Oh, unfortunate. They get BM'd as well. The mid-ladder experience. Just gonna flex on him with a 20 win emote. Let him know he'll never get that. And we'll go to the next one. That was a little bit savage, but it was, it was true. It was true. You guys, you guys can respect it. You guys can respect it. Um, yeah, well, that's kind of crazy. The mirror elixir golem got me. I wish that didn't happen. I guess I slightly overcommitted on the right hand side, but I kind of need to take the tower, so it's, it's tough. On to the next one. First time catching you live, says Xavier. Yo, what's up, brother? What's going on? Bodied? Yeah, we did. We, we did. We did get bodied, and we also bodied him with that uh, comment, but it is what it is. Dang, yeah, I know. I was a little bit savage, but it's so deserved. You guys, like, if you end up losing to someone that BMs you and stuff, you just. You can say stuff like that and just move to the next game and just be like, okay, whatever. On to the next one. I say those type of things in my head to make myself feel better, but I'm just going to be fully transparent with you guys. Like, if I lose to a mid-ladder person, I'm never going to really rage about it. I'll just be like, okay, like, you know, I could have played better. I could have won that game. But also at the same time, like, I definitely lost that game mostly based off of card levels. So it's not like the worst thing in the world. Okay, so I'm going to go for goblins here. And then Electro Spirit and activate King Tower. Yeah. Let's go, baby. Level 14 Mega Knight's got nothing on me. 
Nothing on me out here. Oh, wait, I'm leaking elixir. <laughs> I was celebrating the play too early today. Also, you've got level 12, yet you are a level 14 Mega Knight warrior. Dude, I think this guy's enlisted at OJ's school of uh, whaling. He's, lear he's literally learned from OJ's whaling uh, tactics. He is an OJ aficionado. <laughs> What is this, man? Your boy nature. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for being a part of the channel, my man. I appreciate you, dude. I love you. And hopefully you're having a fantastic day. I really, really am thankful for your support. Oh, man. Don't worry about it. I always lose to over-level players. Yeah, I lost to two over-level players. The last guy I really should have beaten. I just messed up with the Dark Prince doing too much damage to my left-hand tower and... If that hadn't happened, I would have destroyed him. But, you know, sometimes you mess up. Also, Snowball, so overpowered. Look at that. That's a level 9 Snowball. I countered it with level 9, my dudes. Easy out here. We're clean with it. Oh, no. Scary. Scary, spooky times. Oh, the goblins are dead. Not good. Oh, my gosh. That defense, though. We're clean with it. Let's go. You got level 14 cards, but I don't care. We got level 14 skill out here, bro. All right, we're gonna go in for a Dark Goblin here. We're gonna be able to kill the Electro Wizard. We know he's gonna go in for a Mega Knight on top of this because that's how these play type of players roll. We're gonna go in for a Goblin Barrel. Make sure that we go for an Electro Spirit so we can chain onto the Witch and then hopefully have the Dark Goblin kill the Witch. Burn the Witch, burn the Witch, burn the Witch. We're gonna go in for a Skeleton Barrel because he's gonna try to Mega Knight and Cheese on top of the Dark Goblin. And then if he does that, oh my gosh. He's getting finessed. His mechanics are not good enough to go in for the log, and he is getting logged out of this game. Also, another thing that you guys probably underrate, when you're running a fast cycle deck like this, if you're playing against people with over-leveled cards, you just go in for a lot of aggressive stuff, and they mess up mechanically. This guy is not a bad player compared to the other people that we played today. He is pretty good, you know? He's not a bad player at all. Respect to him for, you know, making good pushes with the Mega Knight and Mini P.E.K.K.A. in the opposite lane. Like, he played pretty well, all things considered, um, compared to, like, a mid-ladder person that's trying to learn the game and everything. But if you guys stress their mechanics, they're going to fall apart, and that's how it works. You go in for the Skeleton Barrel when they're not having that much Elixir, when there's a lot of stuff on the map, and there's a fast-moving Dark Goblin coming at them, and there's a Goblin Barrel in their tower, they might mess up the log. That's just something that will happen, you know? So it's really cool stuff. GG and well played to him. We'll bounce on the next one. Yo, your boy Nature just gifted out five subs to the chat. I love you, man. I'm so thankful for that. You're a freaking legend. It's so cool to see the level of support that we've had today. Just the amount of people that are coming through on their birthday, coming through just to have a good day. Or if you guys have had a bad day and you're popping through and just giving us good vibes, it's, it's really appreciated. Um, also, Rick, thank you for the $2, dude. Give, uh, give love to get love. Dude, well, that's a very nice sentiment. All right. Fireball bait is free to play friendly as well. Not really. Not really. Why do you clickbait so much? So it's not really clickbait if it's a top tier deck. If you guys look at my, um, so if you look at every single deck that I recommend, every single deck is approved by a pro player or played by a pro player. And it says best deck for the specific deck type. So if you guys are ever wondering, um, this is a common question or a common misconception that people have. If you don't understand that a deck can be really good in a specific deck type and be dubbed best, like best log bait deck. Well, the best log bait deck might not be the best deck in the game overall. For instance, this deck right now, as I said before, is the best deck for Arena 15. There's no doubt about it. If you want to beat people that are over-leveled, I'm showing you guys with level 10 cards, level 9 cards. The cards utilize their abilities really well, despite not really mattering with the card level. Is this deck the best deck in the game, right? Do you extrapolate that and make some really dumb decision and say, wow, he said best deck? It's going to be the best deck in Clash Royale. If, if you do that and you make that extrapolation, that's kind of your problem, but... For underleveled cards, definitely the best deck that you can play. And um, for my for my videos, you can look at them and I say like best Night Witch deck. I show the highest ranked player using that specific deck. And there's no other Night Witch deck that comes close, for instance. So just make sure like when you're looking at things and you don't understand something, never go to the accusatory frame of mind where you're like, wow, you're clickbaiting instead of being like, oh, you know, 
He said it was the best deck in a specific type, and he's giving us an option if I like that deck or if I want that specific thing. Just, just keep that in mind. Also, I overuse the word best for all of my titles and thumbnails because it performs extremely well for SEO, which is search engine optimization. So if I want my videos to get more views, generally going to be using terms that are searched more often. I would love to extrapolate, or I would love to use different words more often, uh, but best doesn't work as, best works so much better than powerful, for instance, or other type of um, words. So just keep that in mind. Um, yeah, that was just uh, one of those things I wanted to do. Angry tag? No, not angry. That's just uh, me being real about a conversation. Um, uh, what are your thoughts? Don't address the bad, uh, bad vibes. No, this is a really big misconception that I wanted to address. This is not saying, Jake, you're ugly. Uh, Jake, you're terrible. Like those type of things I don't read, right? If someone says something that's super mean, that is, it has no foundation, that there's nothing to really talk about, then I don't really bring that up. But if it's a misconception that people don't understand, then I think it's worth clarifying. So that's one of the reasons why I uh, took the time to address that, that comment. Why don't you upgrade every card? Because I want to show an authentic experience. If I upgrade all my cards, then everyone is going to uh, see me as level 14 player. And then pushing up with level 14 cards against level 14 players isn't very fun. But if I'm using a level 10 skeleton barrel against a level 14 giant skeleton, it's going to be something that not everyone in the game can do. So this is kind of a cool experience and it is definitely more of a vibe and it's something that I'm more proud to publish as my content. Um, hopefully that makes sense and uh, hopefully you vibe with that as well because that's what I want to do. Also, Frankie, thank you for the $20, brother. And then JT, lots of love for becoming a member, brother. Super stoked to have you a part of the squad. Okay, so the Dark Goblin is probably able to kill everything here even though the level 14 bats are pretty sturdy. They're not going to take uh, do any tower damage. That's what's up. Who let him cook? Dude, I don't know. <laughs> Sir Tag proof that everyone has haters? Uh, no, I don't even think that the bird, the dude that said clickbait is like a hater. I think that's just like a misconception. There's definitely comments that you saw earlier that are haters, but that 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 was probably not it. Um, All right. Let's go, let's go. Skelly Barrel is so underrated. Oh yeah, 100%, 100%. Also, you guys, um, if you guys are ever like too pressed about like bad comments or anything just realize that uh i don't know do what i do don't respond to them most of the time and then it's just it doesn't really matter like you you at least for me like there's so many positive things i always take the time to read those every single support message that you guys read like from the donations i always read those i try to read as many messages or comments or questions as possible and um i truly believe if you wanted to be angry at all points in life you could just spend time on twitter and see negative things all day but that's not what I do. I kind of just vibe and chill in our supportive community. Bomb tower replacement. Inferno tower, Inferno tower, Tesla are the best two. I would use Inferno tower. Um, cannon is the worst replacement. Inferno tower is best if you don't have bomb tower. Because Inferno tower ramps up over time. So it does a lot of damage to uh, win conditions that are over leveled. For instance, if a hog rider that's level 14 feels like it's a giant because it has so much HP, you're gonna be able to melt it with the Inferno Tower and not have many problems. If you've got a cannon, it's just gonna die to a spell because cannon doesn't do super well when it's under leveled. Bomb Tower does fantastic when it's under leveled, as you have seen, and then so does Tesla to an extent, but Tesla is not near as good as Inferno Tower or Bomb Tower. Fax positivity. Yeah, dude, that's what's up. All right, we're gonna go in for a knight here, and then we're gonna make sure that we snowball so the Hog Rider doesn't get a hit. I think that fully counters it. Beautiful. Let's go, baby. Um, love the Trash or Treasure videos. They're so fun. Yeah, man. Genuinely, some of my favorite videos. Like, um, they take a lot of time to publish. They take a ton of time for me to edit and create. Or, not me to edit, but my, my team to edit, me to review, and us to create. It takes a ton of time. Like, those videos are some of the most intensive videos you'll ever see on my YouTube channel. But I'm really proud to publish them because, you know, it's not every day that you're able to interact with the community and actually pull direct suggestions and stuff from your guys's comment sections and put it in a video and i want to do that as much as i can i can only do it once a month because you know um it just it doesn't i can't i can't spend that amount of time on each video if i'm doing daily videos if that makes sense uh i've gotten significantly it's also to write scripts for the end of the video where it's like this is what we want to do for specific edits it takes so much time like at the very so if you guys didn't know during the games None of that stuff is ever scripted. The games are as is. I get whatever game happens. There is nothing recorded after the game to put in the game. But, so like the games that you see in the YouTube videos, they're all as is. 
But after the game, when we're trying to come up with creative edits, obviously there's a ton of time that goes into those. Like if there's an ending edit at the very end of a game, after the gameplay and after everything's finished, and we review how the deck is created and we talk about how you can make improvements to your deck, that takes so much time to create those type of edits and those intricate details where we give suggestions and talk about how you can improve the deck and what replacements and it's that type of stuff just takes so long and um obviously trash or treasure it's one of those huge edits that is like 30 seconds of editing every single game so it kind of takes double the amount of time as a regular video if it takes double the amount of time as a regular video <laughs> yeah it's just uh, it's hard to do we have an entire playlist though if you type in sir tag trash or treasure on youtube there's a playlist and that shows the best uh the best uh channel that or the best series that i have on my channel and uh that's the series that the guy just commented about saying that he loves and you know that's the one that takes so much time but it's worth it we're gonna snowball on top of the spear goblin so then the skeletons can lock in the tower we also slow down the the tower as well i genuinely could not care at all how much damage the snowball does the utility that the card offers is unbelievable inconceivable it's what this guy thought was reasonable but he's uh gonna be very deceivable here <laughs> this is incredible we can go in for a bomb tower just a body block and make sure that we can keep the dark goblin alive a little bit longer also i can't believe he dropped a firecracker at the river to activate king tower for me Do you guys see that like at the very start of the match he activated okay this game is over <laughs> this one's already over what's your least favorite card um Rocket. I don't like the fact that Rocket was a win condition. I think Rocket was extremely bad for the game. Uh, I dislike Rocket. I dislike Golden Knight. I think Golden Knight is extremely... Un Ooh. Uh, okay. So Rocket, Skeleton King, then Golden Knight. Those are the cards that I dislike the most. Reason why I dislike Rocket, obviously it was a win condition. It just spell cycles and then people play really defensive. Not very fun to play into. Uh, Golden Knight, I hate it because it's an unimaginative bandit plus electric spirit. You're telling me the Clash Royale, after how many years that they were coming up with champions, and they were the, the first thing they ever released is this stupid electric spirit bandit? That is the worst thing they could have done. <laughs> um, I roll with it though, you know, like I still create videos with it. I'm not going to complain about it too much, but it's it's not a good card. It's not a good card concept, and I wish they did something different. Um, Skeleton King, again, it's going to be a Dark Prince plus a graveyard, right? Like, why does a Dark Prince unleash a graveyard? Why is that a thing, you know? Like, they could have done so much better with that. It's um, an un unimaginable concept. Like, the good thing, if you're trying to uh, spin it in a positive light, everyone understands the dash mechanic from the Bandit, so then they immediately grasp what the Skeleton King does, or everything that the Golden Knight does, because they're familiar with the, the concept and the um, ability of dashing, then they immediately understand the Golden Knight dash because they've played Bandit or seen it before. So it's easy to pick up and play the other thing skeleton king everyone understands graveyard so then they understand the skeleton king ability and they immediately grasp it and see what it's going to do so for an ever-evolving game that is constantly adding cards like 109 cards in the game right now they want the cards to be easy to pick up and play and not too difficult to understand because it becomes really intimidating for new players to go, go and jump into a game and then see that there's so many things for them to learn right? It's scary for new players, for some new players. For me, I look at it, I'm like, damn, there's a lot to learn. I'm excited to learn about it. This game has endless potential for me to like understand and feel fulfilled because I'm always able to improve. For some people, it's like, I don't want to learn all that crap. I just want to play one deck, but now I have to memorize everything. So that's, that's one thing. Keep that in mind. Um, and that's, that's also why it's really good that they have cards that are easy to pick up at the start. Like, for instance, Giant. If they change Giant at all to have any special ability, it would be horrible for the game. Because people at the very start of the game, they want to like ease their way into Clash Royale with a card that is stupid to use. It's like you don't even have to think about it. You just drop the Giant. It's a tank. It's self-explanatory. And it does damage to towers. That un like People start to understand the concept of win conditions. And then they start to ease their way into the game. And they're like, wait. <laughs> okay. Now you're telling me there's an Electro Giant? Wait. There's a Goblin Giant? There's so many different flavors of ice cream that I wasn't introduced to before. So, yeah, it's kind of cool. Make a 3.2 game. What do you mean 3.2? Opinion on Cannon Cart? One of the best cards in the game that is extremely underrated. But the issue with Cannon Cart is it costs 5 Elixir. So a lot of times when you're playing Cannon Cart, it doesn't fit into decks because you rather use a champion instead. 
For instance, if you've got a Golden Knight and it's a four elixir ground card, you probably don't have room for another five elixir ground card unless you're running a Golem deck or a Mortar deck. And even then, it's just it's tough to fit it in. So, Cannon Cart, fantastic card, just not really that usable. I would love to activate King Tower, but the Knight has too much HP. I wish my Knight was level 10. Feels bad, man. <laughs> Uh, as you can see, the Electric Spear was able to fully counter that. Love Jake. Check out more tag for sure. Oh, dude, I completely forgot about the videos I was going to suggest. My bad, my bad. Um, so I'll post the videos in the uh, description, or not in the description. I'll post them in the chat. And then I'll also post them in, um, I'll post the more, ta more tag link in the chat. So if you guys are watching on the VOD, you can look at the chat and then find it. You can also check out the pinned comment if I reply to someone. Uh, which I always reply to comments for two hours a day, so I'll be replying to comments on this video as well. Um, I will end up having the link to the video that I said was really, really good, the Trash or Treasure series, also the Ram Rider deck where I beat the top 90 player and I made him rage, and then I will also end up posting the link to my second channel, More Tag. I will have those three links in the pinned comment, so I'll respond to someone, I'll pin someone's comment, and then I'll also show those links, so you guys can check out my reply there, and then check out a whole bunch of new videos afterward. Clash got me too heated. I deleted my account for the third time today. Wait, if you delete your account, you get it back? Or are you just starting over again? <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Here's the thing, dude. If you're not having fun playing a game, take a break and then come back to it later. Number one rule. If you aren't having fun with a video game, they are meant to be fun. Do not stress yourself over some preconceived notion that ranks in video games matter because they don't. Ranks and all these type of things, you just have to have fun playing the game and that's all that matters. And enjoy the things that really matter in life. Time with family, time with your loved ones. That, that's the stuff that you should really care about, bro. Your work as well. Like, I, I don't know, man. Just don't stress about video games. Don't, don't ever stress about video games. I've been there. I've done that. I played StarCraft 2 at like a near professional level, but wasn't good enough to be pro and was really disappointed and always sad because I was never beating anyone that was better than me. And it sucked, man. So don't don't do that. Don't. Also, um, I played StarCraft 2 at such a level where I always wanted to be high on ladder. And every single day I pushed up and I was like, oh, wow, I'm Grandmaster. Oh, I'm Masters 1. Wow, I'm killing it. And if you, if you do that, you're literally just wasting your time if you're just trying to hit a rank. It doesn't matter. No one cares. No one cares about that stuff. It's cool, but don't put it at the cost of your mental health if you're getting too heated. Pink tower activation, too clean. And then we go for Goblin Barrel. How many times have I activated King Tower against a Mega Knight today? The, the, the count is too dang high. The count is too dang high, my dudes. Zap kills my Goblin Barrel. I don't care. You are going nowhere. All right, we're going to go Dark Goblin in the back so we can cycle back to it a bit earlier. We're going to go for Knight in the same spot. Firecracker hits my tower. A little bit annoying. All good, though. We can go for Goblins here. We can go in for a Goblin Barrel. Should be able to kill the Firecracker. Go in for a Dark Goblin at the river. Snipe him with a Snowball. Get back to another Goblin Barrel because we know he's going to go in for a Mega Knight on top of our Dark Goblins. <laughs> I love the fact that he was gearing up for a Mega Knight and ignored the entire Goblin Barrel. That's what you got to do to your opponent. Even if they've got overleveled or annoying cards that you hate playing against, and you're like, screw Mega Knight. I'm sick of losing to this card. You get them into a spot where they have to Mega Knight on your Dark Goblins and Firecrackers at the river, and then they don't have enough Elixir for the Goblin Barrels that are on their tower. So even if your cards aren't as good, you're still going to run away with an absurd lead. If you play better than your opponent and you have more Elixir than them, they won't have Elixir to defend you, and then you win. It's as simple as that. That's, that's all it is. Yo, we're getting rewards. Wait, 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 wait. Come on now. You're seriously going to give me Clone and Mirror? You want me to be an overleveled scoundrel. This is what the Clash Royale is incentivizing people. Okay. I have a belief that Clash Royale is eventually going to buff Mirror again. So I'm going to take Mirror. I'm going to set up for the long game, baby. Screw Clone. Mirror is where it's at. That's what's up. <laughs> Let's push up to the Executioner's Kitchen. We're so close. I can almost taste it. Tricky Goblin Barrel. Not worth. The guy was just going to lose. Um, also, yeah, don't forget to drop a like to the stream, says your nature boy. Yeah, if you guys want to support me for free, easiest, easiest way of doing that is just dropping a like on the video and subscribing to the channel because I post a daily video at 12 p.m. Uh, 12 p.m. PST, 3 p.m. Eastern every single day. So if you guys want to, feel free to, but you know, you don't have to. Don't, don't feel pressured to, you know, like if you want to, feel free to support with the like, but just chill, you know, just chill, enjoy the stream. Thanks for watching as well. Like the fact that you guys are just sitting here and watching the stream, that goes a long way. 
We're gonna go and open a banner box while I'm searching for the uh, links that I'm gonna post. So please give me something good. Well, it's not great, but I think it wasn't a mediocre one, right? Oh, it was a mediocre one. It was one of the high chance ones. No. Clash Royale, why you troll me so? All right, so I don't love the banners this season, so I'm not gonna go and gem the 50. Maybe I should though. Should I always gem the 50 regard? I'm going to gem the 50 regardless because the next one is 100. That's a pretty big jump. Oh, I like that one a lot. I actually love that banner. Uh, that's the one that I was using on my main channel. And it's nice because we've got the Lumberjack and the, the banner pairing. That works kind of well. I, I don't like the Lumberjack because he looks derpy as heck, but I love the Elixir leaking off the sides. Honestly, I think this shouldn't be a very high chance. I think it should at least be rare. Maybe even extremely rare because I think the detail with it, with Elixir, just makes it way more fresh, you know? Anyway, so we're going to go to the more tag channel so then I can show you guys what it is. Um, it, I'm going to go and post it in the chat. You guys can go and check out more tag by typing more tag, um, more tag Clash Royale on YouTube. But I posted the link in the chat. That's my second YouTube channel where I do upload other Clash Royale content. I think I've posted three videos in the past month there. And then I post shorts, cool fun highlights from my videos every single day. And actually, there's a video on the More Tag channel today if you guys want to check that out. All right, so then the Sir Tag channel, the uh, decks that I was talking about. Uh, first off, the Trash or Treasure series. This series is absolutely incredible. Like, this is the one that we spend a lot of time on. If there was one series, I would recommend on my YouTube channel. It teaches you how to build decks. It teaches you what decks are good. I'm spamming the playlist in the chat. The most recent video in the playlist is the deck that... I ended up, uh, that's the, that's the, the, the recent trash or treasure. So the, that's the one that we published a couple days ago. That's the one. Well, actually yesterday, I, I posted a video on that yesterday. And then lastly, this is the, the, the video where I ended up beating a top 90 player in the world. And he was BMing me the entire time and he thought he won and then he got, and then he lost. It was really funny. So that last video shows me beating professional players when they think they beat me and they BM'd me the entire time. Also, let's go and upgrade our masteries here as well while we're waiting. See what else we can do. Collect the masteries? Yeah, yeah. You guys have any other questions while we're collecting masteries for our cards? Let me know. Oh, it unlocks at level 14. Feels bad, man. Uh, how can I see what other cards we have masteries on? Okay, yeah. It should have a check on it, I think. Ooh, goblins. We're mastering you. Let's go, baby. So, all these other ones I've already collected all the masteries on. Maybe, uh, maybe Bomb Tower, potentially. Yeah, we've already collected all the masteries there. Oh, you have to upgrade the card to level 11 to be able to unlock the mastery? That's so lame. It's a bit unfortunate, but at least, you know, the damage dealer mastery allows you to unlock more cards so then you can level it to level 11. So, I do like that aspect. I do like that aspect. They're giving you the cards first, so then it helps you upgrade if you play the card a lot. Actually, that that's pretty well thought out. All right. I do like that. I do like that. I changed my opinion there. Tin Man, thanks for becoming a member. And then Lovish, uh, Anna, and thank you so much. Wow. We got two new members out here. You guys are incredible. Y'all are really popping off with some value out here. Hee 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 ha. Wait. This guy is the hee hee ha master. We got to give him the hee hee ha. Hee hee ha. <laughs> also, I don't know if you guys like it, but my editors will always do um, edits of me having an emote in real life where I see hee hee ha and then we put it in a video and I just love it. Maybe cringe for you guys. Maybe. I don't know. So it depends on who you are, but it's really fun for me to see those edits. Yo, 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 yo. W arrows? Yeah, that was not the best arrows for my dude. Wait. We're going to finesse him here. We're going to go goblins? He's going to lose his Inferno Dragon. Oh my gosh, he does have overleveled cards. He's got a random Valkyrie level 13. Bro, I wasn't ready. My body wasn't prepared. That's not even boosted this season, man. What's up with that? Also, as I said before, you can run Valkyrie instead of Knight. Oh, that Knight was spicy. Pulling the Electro Wizard and the Valkyrie at the same time. Fantastic start for us. I can also go and snipe buildings in the middle using our Dark Goblin. So, like, if he's going to try to counter our Skeleton Barrel, we can snipe it with the Dark Goblin if it's counter pushing. Kind of cool. I wouldn't do that originally, but I would do that if there was a building at low amount of HP that I could break through. I think the wizard dies to this Dark Goblin, and the Dark Goblin does not get hit by the wizard, if you guys didn't know. Look at the Dark Goblin range, baby! That's what I'm talking about! That's clean. That's incredible. I was hoping he would drop some elixir there, but... 
It's totally fine if he doesn't, because I can go in for a knight and a goblin barrel on the right-hand side and make sure that he doesn't really get as much value as he's hoping. I think I want to go knight a little bit further away. You guys might laugh at me, but the reason why I'm dropping the knight super far away is so then the skeletons don't immediately lock onto it, and then we're going to be able to finish off the skeletons one by one with the knight. I think that was actually the right play. Does the Electric Spirit chain onto the skeletons? I think so. It doesn't even kill skeletons, bro. My Electric Spirit is so underleveled, it doesn't even kill skeletons. That's something messed up. That has to be messed up, my dudes. You ever played Smite? I have not played Smite. I played Wild Rift as the only MOBA that I've played on mobile. Well, actually, that's a lie. I played Mobile Legends Bang Bang. But Wild Rift is my favorite game. It's just uh, unfortunate that the developers did not choose to pursue it much because obviously I can't create content on the channel that just doesn't really work. All right, so we're going to always go opposite lane of our opponent because we don't want to give him counter push after he defends the double barrels. So like if he goes wizard here, it doesn't really matter. All right, we're going to go dark goblin early so we can cycle back to another one. Or snowball on this. We're saving this and then going for a knight. Perfect gameplay. Let's go, baby. He's going to arrow the first Dark Goblin, but we're back to another one, brother. See that? I cycled it early, so I got back to it before everything else. Then I orchestrated my defense where I didn't cycle my bomb tower. And I knew I could eat some damage from the wizard because I had more HP on the left-hand side. And then because of that, I was able to defend the E-Barbs way more effectively because I had a full HP bomb tower and I didn't cycle it early. We're going to go for another Dark Goblin. We're going to probably get him to arrows this. That's going to be completely fine for me. We're going for a bomb tower here, as, as I said before, as our, one of our best answers to the E-Barbs. And then we're going to go for a Skeleton Barrel and a Goblin Barrel. Skeleton Barrel tanks for the Goblin Barrel, and then it also pops, and then it distracts for your Dark Goblin to not die. The Dark Goblin will probably die eventually, but it still might get some damage. Oh, baby! Let's go, guys! All right, so... <laughs> you guys are going to laugh at me real quick, but it's going to probably work. If I push the Witch away, maybe the Goblin can lock down the tower. Ah, oh, I was optimistic. I'm going to go for another Goblin Barrel here. I would love for the Witch to die to the Dark Goblin. I don't know if it's going to work, but I want the Electric Spirit to chain onto the Witch and then have the Dark Goblin lock tower. Beautiful. Look at that play, guys. These plays, these outplays right now are working out so well for us. Sometimes when I'm on a vibe and I'm just like playing well, things go together really cohesively. I think he might arrows. So I'm going to go in for Electric Spirit instead of going for Goblins initially. Because if you think that your opponent is going to arrows, never drop the card that is more valuable, right? Drop an Electric Spirit. If they arrow it, it's whatever. It still pulls the E-Barbs back. Then drop your Goblins or Skeleton Army afterward, after you see their arrows. So we defeated Hee Hee Ha, and I don't think he's Hee Hee Ha in anymore. So pretty easy win. We are so close to 5,500. We have climbed up so many trophies today. Let's go, guys. We're defeating Arena 15 live with everyone watching. We love to see it. Also, if you guys enjoy this, make sure to let me know in the chat so that I do it in the future. Because I could maybe... Just push all the way up to 7,500 trophies and make this a series. Wait, what if I, uh, what if I do this series next season? What if I start a brand new account on my main channel and do a series where I literally start from zero, get past Ral as my only purchase and climb all the way up and have a different video each, each time. I'm considering doing that. Oh man, that might be really fun. I've never done that before. I don't know if you guys would be down for that. I like that idea. Yeah, I think it would be cool. Do it, please. Love this content. Hell yeah. So tag the goat, no cap for that play. Yeah, dude, it was a good one. Which number one in the world? Uh, uh, pushing to number one in the world is kind of outside of my comfort zone. I don't know if you guys saw. I pushed to, two th I pushed to 290 in the world. That's as high as I can get. That's, uh, that's as high as I was able to get. I tried so hard. I tried so hard. I pushed to 290. So... I do not think I can do that again. <laughs> um, I don't know. It was really, really difficult for me. So I'm not at that skill level. As I said before, my skill level is 1,000 to 2,000 in the world. That is very easy for me to be at. Um, top 200 is, is not really easy for me. I just want to keep that in mind. I want to be fully transparent with you guys. A lot of you think I'm like the best player in the world, or sometimes people think that content creators are a lot better than they are. I am not better than top 2,000 to 1,000 in the world. That is my real ranking. That's where I am whenever I try. Without trying super hard and getting lucky, when I try super hard and I get lucky, then I can push the top two, 290. That's what I was able to get last season. Or maybe this season. I forget. That was this. I, I think this season I got 900 in the world. And then last season it was 290. Still a top player though. Thanks, man. Yeah, I mean, I was a professional player back in the day. So I had a lot of fun playing this game. I still do. 
Uh, Sir Tag to start a free play account. Yeah, yeah, man. I got you. I got you. I think that could be hilarious. I have some ideas on decks that might work and decks that would scale well into the late game. So that'd be a vibe. Wanted to go goblins. Might not be the right decision, uh, but yeah, I should have snowballed and kept my Dark Goblin alive. If the Goblin give us hits, then it's worth it. Okay. I, I don't know, guys. That was what I was theory crafting. I was like, probably going to give us some damage out here. We got a Tesla and we got two Goblin hits. I think it was worth it. But I'm dropping a Skeleton Barrel on the back into the Tesla. Why did I do that? Why did I just go other side with the Skeleton Barrel? Tesla went to pull it. I'm not very smart, is what I'm trying to say out here. Worst Skeleton Barrel of my life. Almost as bad as my Snowball. We're throwing back to the uh, the Snowball of the first game, if you guys remember. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Electro Giant shouldn't be that much of a predicament if we're able to kill this. Uh, it's going to be a problem, though, because the Firecracker. Yeah, that was a really bad placement for me. I don't know if you guys saw, but I did not do the right placement for the um, for the Bomb Tower because both towers were not shooting the Electro Giant. So this is a terrible gameplay on my end. All right, we got to focus up because this is more of a difficult matchup since he does end up having level 14 Electro Giant, and I've got a level 10 Bomb Tower. So got to play really well to win this one, I think. Goblins here. All right, the knight's just gonna die, but I think it's okay. You can cycle Electric Spirit and Goblin Barrel just to play more aggressive. I think that with the King Tower activation and the right Bomb Tower placement, we're totally fine. Dude, why do I keep messing up the knight? Oh, that's so embarrassing. It's actually embarrassing. There's no other word to describe it. Probably an Electric Giant into this, hopefully. We're getting Electric Spirit down, so then we can keep the Dark Goblin alive a little bit longer. I go Goblin Barrel here. And as I said before, I kind of want to Snowball so we can keep the Magic Archer away from our Dark Goblin optimally. That's so big. That's actually a gigantic play for us. All right, we got to go Bomb Tower. I don't know if I was able to afford like the right placement in time, so I just wanted to do that placement. All right, he's going to Tornado to kill. Totally fine. We've got two towers focusing with the Dark Goblin. I think we're okay. Love to win this game. It would make me so happy. But I am showing you the right placements, guys. Electro Spirit chained onto the tower for some huge damage. Oops. Gonna be a problem for sure. We're gonna have to go in for um, a Dark Goblin, Electro Spirit. I don't know how well this is gonna work, but I have to try. Gonna go for another Goblin Barrel with the Knight tanking. Dark Goblin should be able to put in work. He probably Electro Giants into this, which is totally fine. We're going to Skeleton Barrel as well. We're going to let the Dark Goblin die, cycle another one. I think with the Bomb Tower on the map, it should be fine. I don't think I hit this with the Snowball, but hopefully we do. All right, that was pretty good. We're an Electro Spirit here. Really good Electro Spirit, actually. That was goaded. We're going to do this. And then Skeleton Barrel as well. Hopefully the Dark Goblin's able to kill everything. Going for a Goblin Barrel and then cycle a Bomb Tower last second. This last second Bontar might have uh, might have won us the game if the goblins can do enough, which they don't. But I played a lot of aggression when he had a low amount of elixir. You guys are noticing. Dropping the skeleton barrel here will distract both of his range cards, and then we're able to go in for two dark goblins again. This is a very bad game on my end, but I still think I can win. I think I do win actually. I don't see any universe where he uh, breaks through. So, yeah, we walk away with a W. Wow, that was a uh, hard-fought battle against a level 14 Electro Giant, level 14 Magic Archer, level 14 Valkyrie, level 14 Firecracker. I didn't even play well, and I still won. He's yawning, but uh, I don't know, dude. I don't think that was very easy for you. That was... <laughs> I like flexing the 20 win emote on people that, um, that are, like, yawning at the end after they lose with overlevel cards. It's kind of funny. Like, come on, man. Don't do that. <laughs> don't, don't, don't give the yawn after you lose with the Letter Giant and Valkyrie and Magic Archer. Um, because, like, if you guys think about it, like, the matchup, if if someone's playing at the similar skill level, they can use Tornado with Magic Archer and Firecracker and line up your knight and then win the game, right? Like, if he played that a little bit better, he would have won. But, obviously, that's not what happened. Um, but the one good thing to look at his deck is he didn't level up Tornado. If That's a card that you don't really have to level up. It's such an overpowered card that... It just gives you the benefit, like the snowball, where it's crowd control, and it slows things down. It pushes things back. It gives you king tower activations. It doesn't really matter what level it's at. Audio? Oh, is there audio issues? Audio is good now? I'm sorry about the audio. I'm sorry about the audio. I was so focused on the game that I wasn't able to fix the static. Sometimes that happens. That's one of my issues with the recording. I'm very sorry about that, guys.
Wait, did we just beat he ha ha and now we're playing against ha ha ha? Oh my gosh. Don't do this to me right now, man. Chill for a split sec, man. Do not. Do not go in for a wall breakers, hog rider, fire spirit. The audacity of this man. He's going to Mega Knight me. Oh, not a Mega Knight. Wow, I'm surprised. Unique strategies out here. More cards spammed at the river that are not Mega Knight. <laughs> Who would have thought? I think I'm okay. I don't think I have to spend any extra elixir. Raged up skeletons are spooky, but not super spooky. He's down elixir for sure. So I'm going to skeleton barrel, goblin barrel, and pray he doesn't have arrows. He's got arrows. He's got arrows. He's just waiting. Oh my gosh, he doesn't have arrows. Woo! Let's go, baby. Yo, that's sick. All right, we're going to go bomb tower here. We're going to have to get a knight down afterward. The hog rider is going to be a problem, but the bomb tower probably is able to kill everything. That was such a good defense. So I want to talk about something for a sec. If you try to defend everything, you will not defend anything. You'll lose all of your towers. So I knew if I drop bomb tower and goblins, given my elixir count, I was able to deal with the e-barbs. I knew the hog rider was going to die already and it would do some damage to my tower. And I knew the wall breakers were something I could not defend. So I selectively defend the cards that are coming at me and then I dominate. That's how it works. Selectively defend and dominate. All right, this Dark Goblin, definitely dead. A little bit unfortunate stuff, but it's all good. We go for Goblin's last second. The Raged Up Evarbs are a conundrum for me, but not game winning for my dude, especially if we Snowball. Okay, it's going to take my tower. Nothing I can do. Played well played. Uh, I might lose this game. This might be a first, uh, first loss in a bit. Would not be ideal, but could happen. Could also be a win. Don't know yet. He's got multiple win conditions, so that's kind of a problem. The defense was really good until uh, the second coming of E-Barbs, and I did not drop my most efficient placements. If I did better placements, I would have won that, actually. All right, let's go for the Dark Goblin in the spot that he's more likely to spam into. And we can go Goblin's middle. Yep, perfect. Really good gameplay on our end. Perfect. Really, really proud of how that went. For an Electric Spirit? Hopefully the Fire Spirit does Oh, the Fire Spirit one-tapped it. That kind of sucked. Not going to lie, I was hoping that wouldn't happen. Knight in the middle. I think that we can maybe take his entire tower with his Dark Goblin. If he's not good. Doesn't play well, hopefully. Nice. Wait, 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 wait. Three crown? Oh my gosh. No way. No way. No way. Oh my gosh. Are you guys kidding me? If you win this match, I'll... Um, I'll like. If you lose, <laughs> I'll like the stream. If you lose, I'm disliking it. Wow, that was a, that was a bold play, man. That's incredible. The dude's like, if you, if you lose, you're getting a dislike. <laughs> Thank you for the like, man. I will collect good on your bargain. Let's freaking go. Wow. Huge W, my dudes. Let's get it. We're inches away from Executioner's Kitchen. We just sliced and diced. Are you kidding us? Dude, I can't believe we won that. I cannot believe we won that. It was insane. Love your videos. I used your Golden Knight deck from the pre previous Golden Knight video. Lots of love from Canada. A good offense is a good defense after all. Yep. Dark Goblin MVP. Yeah, Dark Goblin's really good. Firecracker is also extremely good as well. That Dark Goblin is goaded. All right, this guy's got Harry Potter and Hog Rider. Um, we'll see what he's cooking in his deck. I said that because I knew you would win. Hey, thank you, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> you just wanted to add the extra pressure, right? Uh, you wanted me to just feel good after we were able to kill it. Or after we were able to win the game. Uh, we killed the Hog Rider with an Electro Spirit, Goblins, and Knight. Usually, I would just like to go in for, like, Goblins plus Snowball. But, obviously, since I have underleveled cards, that's not really a situation I could do. Okay, this guy's built different. He just doesn't want to defend. That's incredible. All right, we're going to go Goblin Bear a little bit further behind. Hopefully, he misses it. It's going to be slightly behind his tower. Uh, did he? No, he didn't miss one. I should have dropped it even further behind. It looks like he drops it his log directly on the tower. So we're going to drop the Goblin Barrel like one tile behind and he's going to miss it. And it's going to feel really good. Hog Rider. Perfect. So notice how I dropped the Bomb Tower. And I waited for him to go in. I knew what he was going to do. I knew he was going to go and spam me. And I was like, I'm not dealing with that today. I'm going to make sure that I have the Hog Rider counter down immediately. If you know your opponent's card cycle, you can like not pre-place a card, but... Hover it, you know? You're like, oh, I know he's going to Hog Rider. Just hover your Bomb Tower, like, where I have my Dark Goblin. Just know that that's going to be the right play. So then you can drop it immediately, or you can switch it depending on what happens. 
So Dark Goblin probably gives us a lot of damage here again. He's going to log it. Oh my gosh. My Dark Goblin built different. For the first time in forever, we got an overleveled card. And the reason is because I've leveled up my King Tower by leveling up a whole bunch of different cards. Um, just to get my... And I've been doing donations and stuff. <laughs> so I have a level 13 uh, Crown Tower. Pretty broken, right? Level 13 Crown Tower. So then I have cards that get boosted. So using the boosted cards each season is so nice. Wait. Just leveling up your Crown Tower is such a big deal. Like a huge deal. I never would have thought. No, the wizard. Wait, how did the bandit not dash? How did the bandit not dash on my tower? <laughs> Dude, I had the most meek voice there. It was like Little Red Riding Hood. I was like, why did it... Where, the bandit or the wizard? I think I was like wizard in the most meek voice ever. <laughs> Yo, Graham, you ate Grandma, Wolf. Don't eat, don't eat Grandma. The little Red Riding Hood and the Big Bad Wolf. Oh, man. That was crazy. Maybe that's the wrong fairy tale. I think I messed them up. <laughs> I said Big Bad Wolf. I think that's three little pigs in the Big Bad Wolf. Wolf, you guys can let me know. Also, if you didn't know, German fairy tales are, like, way more morbid than the fairy tales that you are fed in the United States when you're younger. So if you ever, like, search up the fairy tales, you'll be like, oh, wait. These are not as uh, ch child-friendly as they normally are. <laughs> All right, we're going for a night here, and we'll say goodnight to our dude. I think we walk with a W. The snowball was extremely unnecessary, but funny. Place that bomb tower whenever he goes in for a hog red, or we're ready. We're just holding it. We're holding it. We're not dropping it too soon because we don't want to bleed out any bomb tower health. Because we don't have much health to work with the, with the bomb tower, it's important that you don't cycle it too soon. So each time that you drop a building, it decays over time. So the earlier you drop it, the worse it is. Always try to hold it if you can. If you're leaking elixir, then you want to be dropping the card, obviously. But if you can cycle other cards, like a goblin barrel on the tower, then drop your bomb tower afterward. Way better. If you win uh, the video, I, <laughs> I will... Uh, sorry, I will like the video. If you lose, I will unsubscribe. <laughs> you guys are giving me so many threats out here. <laughs> you're like, if you win, I'll like. If you lose, I'm done. You're dead to me, Jake. And I'll be like, oh, no, please stop. Don't do this to me. Stop putting on the pressure like that. I'll never want to stream again. <laughs> um, that random rocket. Yeah, the random rocket was good. He ended up hitting the bomb tower. Wait, we are one game away from Executioner's Kitchen. We have won every single game besides two of them. The one game we get BM'd by an Elixir Goal Mirror player that three crowns me, unfortunately. Um, I think I messed up on defense there. And then the very first game of the day where I'm like, we're going to destroy everyone. I was so gassed up and hyped. I was like, the best deck to destroy... Dude, I got arrows, mirror, zap, and I did not pay attention at all, and I lost. <laughs> and I was like, okay, we're going to kick this into overdrive. We're going to try really hard, and we're going to dominate our opponents. And then that's what happened, unless, eh, besides that one loss, how many wins? Let's just take a look really quick before we see. Let's check our win ratio today. So last game was 17 days ago, so you guys can see for right here. So one loss out of... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. I might have missed one. We'll do it one more time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So we went 17 and 2 so far. We've played 19 games. This is our 20th game, guys. This is it. We want it. We want it so bad, man. So if we end up winning this next game, we have a 90% win rate. And we get Executioner's Kitchen. Let's go. 90% win rate on ladder with this deck. It's going to happen, baby. I believe. Give me the good vibes. Give me the good luck in the chat. I need it. If you lose, I'll send you $20. Don't incentivize me to lose. Don't do that to me right now, dude. <laughs> What's wrong with you? You want me to lose right now? My man's paying me to the throw. It's like sports betting or something. What you doing, dude? Why? <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys are scaring me. All right, everything's coming down to this game. We need to win it. This is like CRL out here, okay? Hog Rider gets pulled because you dropped your Hog Rider in the worst spot possible. You didn't drop it off to the side so I could drop a slightly different bottom tower placement. That fast finger adjustment from us ended up making sure we could defend even more optimally because I'm out here in my CRL stance. <laughs> I was so cringe, but I love it. The CRL stance, dude. <laughs> we're we're going we're to inspire fear into him with the 20 win emote just to let him know that he's, he's you know, he should be fearful. 
All right, he's going to think that I'm so good with an overlevel deck that I'm like commit completely committed to the cause. I I'm not. I'm literally out here with my level 10 win condition. So you, uh, you, you it's uh, it's uh, a wolf in sheep's clothing right now. <laughs> that's what we're, that's what we're trying to do. Uh, it's it's crazy. We are a wolf and a 20 win player, but we are not actually having a very intimidating thing. All right, we're gonna go for an Electric Spirit, and then we're gonna go for a Knight. And with the Dark Goblin alive, I'm pretty sure that we can fully decapitate the Hog. Not great. We're gonna go Goblin Bro here, because the Dark Goblin on the right-hand side might bait out a small spell. Please, 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 please. That's awful for me. That's awful for me. He zaps our Goblin Barrel, and he's like, Jake, thou shall not pass. Okay, these are bad Goblins, but I'm doing them anyway. I wanna bait out Elixir on the left-hand side. Okay. That's actually not bad. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. That We vibe with that. We two tap the princess with a dark goblin if we want to drop it. Let's roll with it. Two tap, two tap, baby, two tap. Woo, spicy. <laughs> even even level is two tap. If it was one tap, then I don't know what level it would be. All right, we're down a lot of elixir, so I have to play uh, safe and defensive. We're gonna cycle knight in the back so we can get back to it early. We're gonna bomb tower and his hog rider. I hate doing this. I don't have any other play though. I gotta cycle dark goblins like crazy. All right, we can get back to a knight. We're fine. The, the mini packet isn't going to kill us. The hog rider dies. Fast fingers out here. Mobile gaming athlete reflexes out here. Getting back to a counter to the mini packet and shutting down our opponent's dreams. Making the memes. Oh my gosh, the dark goblin's alive and we are going to thrive. Look at this baby. Look at that dark goblin putting in the work. He's hitting a bullseye on the dartboard every single time. Oh my gosh, I can feel it. It's sensational. We got this on lock. All right, we're going to load up a decent defense with a snow... No, the Electric Spirit! It slowed down the Hog Rider. Wait, that's the second time that's happened today. I don't know if you guys noticed, but that is the second time that I've messed that up. <laughs> or no, the third time I've missed a Snowball. We need a Snowball miscounter out here. But we're not missing the opportunity to climb all the way to Arena 16 with the best Arena 15 deck in the game. If you guys want to level up a deck, this is what's up. If you guys want to go rewind to the very start of the video, I go over deck suggestions and I break down what you can replace with each deck or each card. So like, for instance, if you don't have Dark Goblin, Firecracker, or Princess, I go over all the substitutions for this deck at the very start of the VOD. So if you just rewind to the very start, you'll get all the suggestions and the breakdown of the deck and why it's so strong. The Nope Snowball, the, the Snowball was just a blatant assertion of dominance. It was a declaration of dominance that I just told my opponent, hey, I don't need that elixir up in here. <laughs> All right. That was pretty fun. Huge, huge thank you to everyone that is here. Love you guys lots. And uh, yeah, it's just super cool to see such a supportive community come together and be a part of the vibes. Also, if you're a player that's trying to level up your cards quickly, I'm going to be 100% transparent. The only offers ever worth getting are the ones with gems. That's it. And then you use your gems in classic challenges or grand challenges to try out new decks. So you play one deck on ladder at all points in time, then all the offers that come in the shop that actually have gems that are worth it, that are good, then you can use those gems in classic challenges or grand challenges to experiment with different decks. And using those different decks that you're having fun with and messing around with, you can find decks that you want to upgrade. And then you switch your main deck to that main deck, to that deck if you're really comfortable with it, if you really like it. But you get to play at even card levels against everyone in the world, and you get to try every card in the game. Even card levels against everyone is a huge recipe for success. So if you're ever tilted in this game mode and you're just like, hey, I don't want to lose to level 14 players anymore. You go over here, you play in challenges and you have fun. Play in classic challenges because they barely cost anything. It's 10 gems. So you can use your free gems only on that. And if you are going to spend money on anything that isn't gems, I would buy Pass Ryle. I shouldn't say this because I have a credit code, right? And I make money off of you guys spending money on offers. But don't buy any of the other offers. The only offers that are worth it are the ones with gems when they're actually good. Uh, sometimes they're not good, but the gem, the gem stuff is usually good. The other stuff is, I would say, borderline scammy. It just isn't good, right? Like, for instance, if you're buying books, you can just upgrade your stuff regularly without spending $15. Or, or just wait a month, right? Wait a month, buy Pass Rowl. If you buy Pass Rowl every month, you're eventually going to max out your stuff and you're going to get all those rewards. You get a book there that upgrades everything. You get tons of legendary cards and stuff. Why would you ever buy two books for $15? Three times the amount of pass rail. You're telling me that that's worth three pass rails? It's not. Don't do it. 
just buy gems, go into classic challenges, grand challenges, buy the offers with gems, or buy pass rail. Nothing else is ever worth it. Shouldn't say that because I make money off of it, but I don't want you guys to get scammed and that's, that's all I care about. I care about you guys getting the best progress possible and actually enjoying the game to the fullest potential. And um, that's what I'm here for. So I love you guys. Love this community. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being a part of it. Like if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more daily videos at 3 p.m. Eastern. Let me know if you guys want to see the next installation of this series and see me push to Arena 17 maybe with the same card levels or whatever or maybe a different deck. Or if I should start a brand new account where I push from zero, Arena 1, all the way to Arena 20. The, the biggest arena? I think it's Arena 20, probably. Yeah, Legendary Arena, Arena 20. See if you, I should push all the way to 7,500 trophies on a brand new account. Love you guys. Thank you for being here. It was a fantastic time, and I'll see y'all later. Also, um, I will check out some other stuff. By the way, have you played Smite the MOBA? I have not played Smite the MOBA. And Hi, Sir Tag, win this match, says Panda. Thank you, Panda. Love you for the support. And I'll see y'all later. I did not miss all, any of the donations now. I got them. Thank you for letting me know about that. <laughs> Peace. Peace, love, and positivity. No matter where you're watching, no matter where you're, when you're watching, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. And I'll see you in the next one.